Welcome back everybody to the Bros of DK. Today I'm in Italy again. I'm finally on another road trip in Italy after a year of not being in Italy for explorations. And we are here again and this is the first location that we are doing. Behind me here should be an amazing palace with a great story. And I just hanged up my clothes on the car to dry while I'm exploring inside. <laughs> Look at this. <sighs> oh, let's go in. I'm really excited for it. The first adventure of the road trip, going down here and then back up behind the gate. And we are on the property right now of the palace. This is the backyard that I'm seeing right now. And it's completely overgrown by all those years that this palace has been abandoned. Boat. Oh. <laughs> okay, and here we get a full glimpse of the palace itself. Today we tell you the inducing story of the Mamoli family. An historical Italian family that pioneered ski resorts in the Alpine mountain region. This proved to be very lucrative for them, and with the money they built an enormous palace in the beginning of the 19th century. One of the latest inhabitants of the place was the visionary Anne Marie, an inspiring woman that transformed the company into an empire. She lived here until the year 2000, when she sadly passed away. Let me take you room by room through the lives of the Mamori Okay, grab your popcorn, because this is gonna be an epic adventure that we're gonna go on. I just went inside of that door over there, and what I saw just blew my mind. I knew that this place held some furniture, but what I just saw was mesmerizing. I'm gonna take you on a full tour throughout this place and show you what's left behind and tell you maybe a little bit more about the history. And we're gonna search together as well. So uh, take a seat and let's go on this adventure. I haven't been in Italy for a year right now uh, for exploring, but I recognize that I'm in Italy again because I have been stung already 20 times by mosquitoes flying around me here. It's just crazy. Mosquitoes in Italy are the worst. It's the end of summer now and this is the time of the year that the mosquitoes are in full bloom here. <laughs> I'm going to save this part for later because that's the most epic part of the place. But first I'm going to show you this part of the place. I actually don't know what was what these rooms were used for. I think they were more like a business side of the palace to um, do business, invite guests and stuff like that. Not the real living part. And you can see over here, this is like a little sitting area that I'm showing you. And it was probably used yeah, as a gathering place or something like that. Beautiful antique closet with everything still left inside of it. All the glasses. Let's see if we can find something in here. An old school booklet of a chiesa, a, a church. That's Italian for church, as you can see. Maybe it was a local book of the church that was here. You can see that the wood rooms are already working on the furniture in the palace. Wow, this piano. It's a Berlin made piano. Fabrico Berlin. Okay. It still plays. That's amazing. Of course, Italian people have always been and are still are pretty religious. So all around this place, I'm gonna find lots of artifacts 
of the former people that lived here. I love that setup of shares over there as well. Oh, I'm so happy to be again in Italy and exploring over here. I love Italy the most for these incredible ceilings. These artworks, there's, these are literally artworks on the ceiling of places. There used to be a chandelier here, but that has been taken off. And then we have this mesmerizing stove to the side. Some sort of a stone stove, colored and painted. Well, let's go further into the palace. 20 years of abandonment. That's what it does to a place. It overgrows the windows. Spiders come inside and take it over. As you can see, paint crumbles off. And the place slowly gets taken back by nature. I think we just entered into the kitchen. It's actually a pretty small kitchen, as you can see. Gopas and Gopas fridge. No food inside there anymore. Few stoves and a little wood oven from the uh, Bopas. Excuse me, I pronounced it wrong. But uh, a little wood oven that would be used to cook food on. Probably by servants because these people were enormously rich. Here we have some more cups and plates and stuff like that on the table. And an iron, an old school iron. But this one works on electricity. You also have the ones that you have to put on the stove. I love to see those. This one is actually pretty modern. I would say like 40, 50 years old. But you have way older types. And those are my favorite. Oh. Have a look at the room I'm entering into. It's not the room and the furniture, it's just the paintings and the architecture in here that mesmerizes me every time when I come to Italy. Those ceilings and the paintings they do on them. Wow. Little fruit scale here on the wall. You can already see that the walls are cracking and crumbling away. I also really like the mosaic floor here. But it seems to be... Yeah, it's real. Excuse me. It's real. It's just worn off over the years that people have walked over here. <laughs> and this one is even more spectacular. Wow. Gold plating, blue painting, and then we have a setup of shares at the end of this room. I'm not sure what this room was used for. It also seems like some sort of a meeting room. I recognize these chairs from Portugal. I have lots of videos in Portugal where you see chairs like that that are combined. A sofa, a sofa made out of chairs. That's how I should say it. But uh, this is the first time that I see one of these pieces of furniture here in Italy. And also complementary single chairs next to it. And the floor in this room is actually from wood. Crazy. That was just a starter. Now we're going over to the main course and that's the living space of the house. And I think we're gonna also have dessert today because this is gonna be such an epic video. Let's go further in this place. I'm really excited for it. Before we go over to the main course, I first want to show you this beautiful entrance door over here. And that leads into the backyard. The former owners would come in here with their horse carriages, ride them to the backyard. And as you can see now, it's completely overgrown. Parts of the house have collapsed and parts of them are still standing. Let's just quickly view one of those barns that I was talking about. 
Oh yeah, this one. This one is probably where they stored the horse carriages. And now there's a boat in here, as you can see. These people were rich, of course. So they had boats and horses and stuff like that. Wow. Johnson. They would probably take this on the lakes around Italy. Then there's an old school bicycle hanging there from the wall. And over here on this side, you can indeed see lots of equipment for horse riding. But I've checked around and there are no horse carriages left anymore. That's very unfortunate. Because I would love to see those. This over here, this device seems to be some sort of a pump, maybe an oil pump or something like that. Okay, let's go over to the main course. Welcome to the living room. I find it very unfortunate how such a beautiful place is falling apart like this. People neglected it and now what once used to be an enormous, beautifully designed architectural fireplace is just a piece of rubble. Look at these lion heads on each side of it. They have a gold plating on them, on this side as well. And there's even marble in there, Italian marble. Yeah, sorry. That's something that I can't understand. But something could have happened to these people. That's why they most likely left behind this place. So you can't blame them for it. And like always in Italy, we have built-in cabinets. That's something very typical for Italy, France. And I believe, yeah, Portugal as well, but I, you don't see them that much, that's that frequently as in Italy and France. And this one is an especially beautiful one. Let me show you the ceiling. <laughs> I have no words for it. Wow, it's at least five meters high. I believe that's around 16 feet. And it's completely designed from front to back. We see some angels with a cherry blossom tree and then some design around it. What in the world? Two beautiful sofas where the family could sit in the evening and probably talk to each other about their days a marble table in the middle of it. As you can see there are lots of keys from the palace over here on the table. Lots of books as well left behind. I love to see handwritten letters and this is one of those. a letter from 1972 written in Italian maybe from Anna Marie who knows no it's not from Anna Marie but the address is on there so I'm not gonna show it lots of papers on the ground as well and though over here on this side we got another incredible sitting space but four identical sofas and one big one in the middle. I have four identical chairs, one big sofa in the middle. There seems to be a cushion missing here, but it looks beautiful. And this, people call this the Palais d'Or. That's French for uh, gold palace. And I can start to see 
why they say this. These are the gold lions, the gold sofas, the gold plants. <laughs> a carpet on a wall. And over here on the table, I noticed a few pictures. And I believe that this lovely young lady is Anna Marie. Because this is an old school type of uh, picture. And uh, these were probably when she was young. She passed away in the year 2000. And uh, yeah, these might have been some class pictures of her. Okay. I see the stairway down there. But first, let's over, head over here and see what's left behind in here. And I wanted to point out this as well. Here you see, we saw, just saw the building cabinet, but every single door and cabinet has the same style of arch above it. Oh wow, no, this is in the kitchen. This is the dining area. Oh, and at first, have again a look at this ceiling. Wow. Just mesmerizing. And seeing from all the things that are on the ground, it looks like they had to search for things and leave this place in a hurry for some sort of weird reason. But that's not possible because Anne-Marie just died. But I, I'm wondering what happened to her children? Did she have children? What happened to them? Here you can see the first artifact. I'm covering the address with my foot. But let me just turn down the light so you can see. This is the year 2000. Then it got abandoned. There's a letter from UNICEF. So she probably sponsored them. And this is one of the last sponsorships that she would do for them. Beautiful cabinet over here. I've got some glasses left behind. Probably also must have had a husband, but I don't know his whereabouts. Here we got another letter from 1957 from Lidero, I think it is. Unfortunately, I don't speak Italian, so I can't read that for you. But if anybody is so friendly who speaks Italian and you want to translate it, just put it in the comment section for other people to enjoy. A little photo album as well. Oh yes, yes, I immediately recognize her. This is Anne-Marie herself. And she looks like to be on some sort of, the, I think this, yes, these are snowy mountain peaks and she's probably at the ski resorts that she owns, as you can see. Really fancy businesswoman. Looks like she's wearing a tie of some sort. Yeah, no, it's not a tie, it's a scarf, but uh, yeah. She was a real businesswoman and she uh, made these things. She made an empire. And then we have the table in the middle with a chandelier that's at least three meters long hanging above it. Upholstered with chairs around it. And huge stacks of plates in the middle of the table. See another photo album of the family. This was the family of Anne-Marie, the Mal, Mal, uh, Ma, 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 Mo, Mamoli family, excuse me, it's difficult for me to pronounce. Mamoli family, they're having dinner here. So they did have family, and then it's very strange to leave a, pla uh, leave a place like this behind. Cups and plates on the walls, uh, excuse me, beautiful plates on the walls, and on this side as well. Wow. Ah, Antonio Nic Nicola. Antonio Nicola. This is the. Uh, this is what I talked about in the story. Antonio, he uh, went to the business. Uh, he went to school in Milano and became a professor. Wow. And then we have a television here to the side. Let's see what these rooms behold. Oh, first off, you can see even on a double doorway like this. The arch style comes back, but then it's bigger. Ah, this used to be the newer kitchen. So they had an old school kitchen and a newer kitchen like this. 
as you can see all the food and all the things and all the spices are left behind in here stove and it's not really that interesting so i'm gonna quickly go over it and see what's in the rest of the house because we also need to have dessert and that's the upstairs floors Yes, something on the ground that I just hit. Here's another entrance door to the place. And this used to be the toilet. Okay, it's time to go further into the hallway. And it's time to give you guys some dessert. Because you deserve it. <laughs> but I think it's going to be the longest and the biggest dessert that we ever had on this channel. Because I still have to do the upstairs floors. And they are equally as big as the whole area that we just filmed. I have not seen that upstairs yet, so it's also a surprise for me. The first thing that I see here in the hallway is like a little drawing of a mountain. And this is probably a drawing of where they had ski resorts and where they were a lot. This looks like the Mont Blanc, but I'm not 100% sure. See, this place is completely crumbling apart. A little hallway with two beautifully upholstery chairs in it and we have some sort of a I don't know I'm not a bird I don't know lots about birds but it's a taxidermy bird that they had here in the hallway of the place a few books left behind but for the most part it's all about the staircase oh, I, I love the rope hanging from it to the side here to grab onto go to the top floor but I notice a little room here and I think this used to be the bureau where Anne-Marie and her former yeah her former family used to conduct the business side of things because if you live in such a big palace you of course need to earn a lot of money to keep it running wow lots of certificates as well also from a school in Milan, Nicola, that's probably another, um, another family member. And uh, I think she got like a scholarship of 5 billion lire, but lire is not as much as a euro, of course. That's the former currency of Italy. And this is from 1949, so post-war times. Wow. We have old school typewriters in here as well. Incredible. Accountancy papers to the side. And in here, all the accountancy would be left. <laughs> Pictures, but I can't see what's on them. Okay, let's head upstairs now. Even the hand railing of this staircase is upholstered, as you can see. Also, a beautiful ironwork. Walking up this, and I'm looking at the ceiling as well while I'm going up here. Wow! There's also another feature of the of the palace. That's probably also what I call a palace door, palace gold. A gold ceiling and I got a big mirror here in the middle of the hallway to check out yourselves before you went downstairs and joined the family if your hair was right if your tie was correct before going out I just love this place already and I'm not even have been on those bedrooms let's go there it must have been a pretty big family that used to live here as you can see here to the left with bedrooms but also to the right and it will keep going all the way till the end of the palace but let's first head over here to the left and cover this this is where they would make mattresses back in the day they would put springs in there instead of wool like we do nowadays or foam like we do nowadays they also used to do it with horse hair and that was good for insulation but in Italy it's always warm so you don't want horse hair of course it's the first bedroom that I'm entering into. Seems to be like a children's bedroom. 
and very, very Italian. There's a few things how I notice Italian bedrooms. First of all, always Jesus Christ above the bed. See? And then we have this bed frame. Italian bed frames. Let me turn down the light a little bit so you can see better. Always have like design on there. We have a little painting in here of a girl with the flowers underneath it. Typical Italian. And here as well. And these vanities, I don't know, but I just noticed from the shape of them that they are Italian. Here we have a picture, probably of the grandparents of the place. Wow. And another closet to the side here. Excuse me if you heard a lot of cars going by but I'm right next to a very busy road and all the windows of this place are open. Okay, I believe we are entering into what I think is the master bedroom of the place. But excuse me if I'm wrong, of course. We got a bed frame with nightstands built right into them. The bed is still made with these enormous pillows. <laughs> Have a look at those. Okay, it's incredible. And over here, this is not a religious painting that we have here on the wall, but it's still a painting. Of, oh no, excuse me, it's still a religious painting. It's from Saint Anna. It's a religious figure, but I didn't know her because I myself am not Christian. Chandelier hanging from the ceiling and a closet, probably full of clothes. Let's check that out. Oh yeah, still clothes of the people left in here. Oh, we got an x-ray picture here. That's always interesting to see. There seems to be some sort of a fluid on there, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what part of the body this is. Excuse me. And it smells, so I'm gonna place it back. A violin casket, but it feels empty and it is empty. And then we have a huge, huge vanity here in the room. What actually it also holds the drawers, probably for the underwear and the socks and the ties that they used. Wow. Gucci, parfum, pretty expensive perfume. A vacuum cleaner, an old school design. Really lovely design. Let's go further. Oh, they also had a bathroom attached to that room. But all the things, the combs and the brushes still left in here. A bath, toilet, and all the basic stuff that you would find in a bathroom. This looks like to be like a dressing room, a walk-in dresser with all the clothes of the people still in here. This is their little medical cabinet. <laughs> wow. Also the beautiful designs. Italian people. How amazing. Let's head over to the right now and see what's over here. This room is pretty messy, unfortunately, but everything is also still left in here. I'm not gonna go through it. I'm gonna give you a quick overview. It's probably also the kids' room. We see two beds and uh, like I, I think there were like with 10 to 20 people inside of this place at least counting from the bedrooms that we've already seen and that are still to come. Oh my gosh.
This is by a long shot. One of the most beautiful bedrooms that I've ever seen. Just because it has this encaving in the wall where there is a child's bed resting. And probably Anna Marie used to sleep in here. This is history, guys. Wow. She would walk underneath these curtains and sleep in here. And this still made bed. Again, we have Jesus above the bed. What a fantastic bedroom is this. Give you an overview of it. Let's go into a little bit more detail. I really adore these copper designs on the side of the bed. These are not just beds you buy at the IKEA. They're handmade. Two nightstands with a religious picture on it. Let's see what we have in here. Pair of shoes. Well, cabinet to the side. No clothes in there anymore. But I always adore these coat hangers. Nowadays we always have plastic ones. But these are durable wood coat hangers. And if we produce these nowadays, we wouldn't have so many plastic coat hangers that we threw away. And they look, they look very aesthetic and keep your clothes straight as well. I think this is a much better design than we have nowadays. I see them all around Europe, literally all around. Abandoned places, not new places. Here to the side we have the window. But on the window I want to point out the curtain. Let's have a look at the design of the curtain wrapping around up there and the window has been taken over by the veins growing inside of it after 20 years of abandonment nobody cared about this place anymore neglection wondering if this is just paint no this is just paint not marble Beautiful cabinet here. And everywhere in this place are keys. We saw keys downstairs, keys upstairs here. I've seen lots of keys and I haven't bound it out yet how strange it is, but that's pretty strange. Why would there be so many keys in the place? Yet again, more keys here, keys all around. Another key here. Where do they all lead to? That's the question. Beautiful mirror above the fireplace. And then a very low hanging chandelier here. And a very small one as well. I would have, yeah, I would have put a bigger chandelier and a little bit higher here in the room. But that's not my design. Beautiful ceiling as well. Not a cabinet which, with some religious artifacts on it. And this door leads to the balcony, but I'm not going to go outside, otherwise people will find out where this place is, because you can see the street. This is an old school pipe, and it has been used a lot. As you can see, it's cracked up from the side. Wow. We've got some religious artifacts again in here. A picture of an old lady. And I think we see Anna Marie coming back here. She has the same facial um, details as the pictures we saw downstairs, but I'm not 100% sure about this one. Okay, let's go further. It goes on and on and on and on this place. We point out the lights with. Okay, hello. I didn't notice you. We have a chapel in the house. A small little chapel. I was just looking at that light switch and this was in the corner of my eye. Oh my god. There's a beautiful little chapel. Praying beads. Oh. 
Pater Noster et says here in Portuguese. So many artifacts left in here. I really love the style and design of it. A curtain here on the wall. Wow. One last view of that chapel. Go further again. And we've got another bedroom. No way! Ah, oh, those bed frames. Wow. Those are beautiful beds. But first off, look at the ceiling. It's crumbling apart, falling on here. And you can see that the ceiling is made from some sort of gips and bamboo. Yeah, it's a pretty old school style of building. It's, uh, the palace has been built in the 1800s. That's no wonder why that is. Check out these bed frames. They're just wonderful. Mattress is still on the bed. This identical bed to the side of it. So again, two children would have slept in here. Vanity of some sort with a mirror above it. Identical design on the mirror. And I think also up there. And an identical closet as well. Are there still clothes inside? That's the question. And yes, there are. Bad ropes, no clothes. Oh no, excuse me. This is the vanity. Beautiful design. It's got a picture of a man here. It's not a pic, no, it's a picture, excuse me. Not an iron. Look at this light switch. Which light does it turn on? I don't see a light. <laughs> there is no light. Wow. One last overview of this room before we go further to the next one. And probably the next one. And another one. And another one. Let's see. This is nothing, this seems to be nothing. You kidding me? Another double bedroom? <laughs> but another different type of ceiling in here. This one looks like 3D and surreal. Those crowns are popping out of the ceiling and when, when you see it in person, I don't know if it's visible on camera. There are such, such beautiful ceilings. The other bed frame is not as beautiful, but this one over here is typical Italian again. Like I said, religious picture, drawing on a bed. And this one is of babies or angels. They are not flying, so you can't tell if they are angels. Big cushion on here. Still made. And the front of it it's also pretty nice. Wow. I think another room. This is pretty empty. But lots of religious signs and religious pictures again. Uh, statues and medicine bottles over here as well. These are old school medicine bottles. Look at this device. This is an old school shaver, yeah, shaver. It's to cut hair, what the barber uses. Don't know the exact name for it. But this is how you would cut your hair. It would go really fast. And the blades would snip your hair. Wow. 
praying beads, Maria statues, all those things. For the most part, this room is pretty empty. I think it goes further over here, the house. Yeah. Ooh, that's a bright light. See a bathroom over here. Let's check that out. Oh, I love that toilet. Just in the back of the house, through this little small door, and then you could come into the toilet. The toilet brush, the toilet itself, completely covered with spider webs, and the reservoir on top. This is also very typical for yeah, abandoned places around the world. The reservoir bends around, goes to the toilet to create speed on the water. Okay, we have another hallway over here with a staircase and a painted ceiling again, going back. Let's see, let's go down it. Some more artifacts. Let's see if I can bring this window here. Beautiful window as well. And some sort of a gate down there leading back into the backyard. Let me check if it's open. It seems to be locked. But this also seems to be like an entrance hall. Wow. First, let's go up here because there's another part of this beautiful palace that we haven't seen yet. Let's go through here. Little storage area with what seems like a sled. What's strange to me is these people were such big fans of ski resorts and skiing, but I didn't see any skiing equipment here. What could be the case about that is that they maybe had a summer house or, or a house in the mountains where they kept their skiing stuff and never brought it in here. So that's also a possibility. We saw a sled down here. So that's one artifact of their skiing history. Wow. This room is also crazy, but I got to be careful in here because the whole ceiling is already starting to collapse and the light is shining in. Got a carpet of an Indian woman here. Wow, Indian or Asian woman. Lots of clothes and newspapers on the ground. Let me check one of those for you for the dates. <gasps> No way, this is a newspaper from 1905, wow, this one is 115 years old, <laughs> that's crazy, we got these boys carrying around newspapers, selling them, artifacts, people on horses, popes, wow and old school advertisements. <laughs> That's incredible. Another one over here. There's a like a whole stack of these newspapers. 25th of March, 1906. This is better than museums. Wow. Big piles books, topography. I really love going through this. Got a little stove in the corner over there. And chest filled with blankets or clothes, most probably. More newspapers. And more religious artifacts again. And what's here in this room? Oh, that's a big hole. That's a big hole leading into the basement. Some sort of a storage area, probably for the accountancy stuff. I'm not gonna walk into this room. That's just too dangerous. Just gonna give you an overview of it. What an exploration. Wow. 
First location in Italy and immediately such a palace with such great history. That's a great start for the 2020 Brozo DK road trip in Italy. I hope you guys enjoyed this palace, the story of Anne Marie, building the business, the family behind it. For me, it was just wonderful. If you did so, please like the video, subscribe to the channel and go down there and write a nice comment for us. And as well, we also have a Patreon page. There you can help us out with going on these adventures because it's pretty expensive for our students. And uh, yeah, so you can help us with a little donation each month and you will get benefits back from it, the videos earlier, mod masks and stuff like that. Check it out. And with that all being said, I want to thank you all very much for watching this week's video. And I will see you again next week in another epic exploration. Bye bye. I love you.